Hey everybody, this is Rhino, and we're back to another live stream of Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel and Video Game News. Today is Wednesday, September 27th. Now, I did a, like, catch-up video last night, and now I think I may come to really regret that, because I was expecting there to be a lot of news that, because I didn't cover any of the news on Monday and if anything there's been even less news than really should have happened um, so if anything that's going to leave me with just doing these three daily quests and then working towards getting the XYZ and fusion summons since we have one more day on that um, yeah I, I definitely gambled the wrong there in in the assumption that there was just going to be a lot of news this Wednesday <laughs> and that catching up was the right move and inherently I guess catching up was the right move didn't hover over those cards very, for very long there, sorry. Um, because now we have a weird situation, but not a terrible situation, where this may just be a shorter stream. Um, still don't really have any extra cards to dismantle. And then this Tri-Brigade Sprite deck that was recommended to me is still far far too out of the realm of possibility and that's the problem here too is that we're on the 27th and we really should be playing rank to get up to platinum L let's let's start with that I guess even though the other one's probably a higher priority um, so yeah we could we could definitely spend a lot more time today going over playing Yu-Gi-Oh! instead of uh, talking about news to stretch it out or we could just have a shorter experience I really don't have a good reason for it but my newest macro of the ever increasing collection of macros worked about two times scraping the um, Steam DB charts and now seems to pretty much never want to work. I don't know what change I made there um, but it is fairly obvious to me I need to just re-evaluate what deck is this? What in the world the deck do I even have equipped here? Th these aren't my cards. This isn't Zodiac. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know what what was going on there. It was suggesting cards from his deck to add to my hand. Hmm. So what are we? What are these starlings? Lyrilisk. Lyril Yusk. Cards. Some kind of winged beast bird cards. Deck. Or it may just be a winged beast deck in general, since this too is also a winged beast card. But yeah, uh, I'm gonna have to remake that macro and just re rethink how everything works. I think in part, part of it is when it runs the calculations to 
add a value to an array because UI vision is just not really designed to to handle arrays directly. It's sp running up a small sandbox of a browser, effectively, and so it's potentially the equivalent of opening a tab to run a small JavaScript calculation, then closing the tab, then running, then opening up another tab to do it all over again a hundred times over, and just the process of opening so many tabs and closing so many tabs in the background to have this sandboxed uh, system is probably just not efficient. So, if I can avoid using the execute script command, which does run up the sandbox, and instead just have my current macro broken into three smaller steps. One would be the collection step to collect all the data from SteamDB and then put it into a comma separate value inside of UI vision, um, which I assume that is not sandboxed and not using as much resources. I think it would be faster overall. So you'll have that collection step, you'll have a saving step, um, and then you'll have a reading step from the common separated value in which it then gets submitted to the Google Sheets form, um, form responses page. Which the form responses page is the thing that's failing more often than not. There is also a command that says wait for element visible that I think I need to just completely avoid using because I just don't think it works. Um, and it seems to be causing more trouble than it's worth. Which is a shame because if it worked, it would be the absolute correct thing to use is to get rid of arbitrary pauses to wait for a page to load um, or an element on the page to load in favor of verifying when something is done and moving faster because of that. And this really just does need to be all about speed because without that speed the whole process takes way too long but it also needs to all be about a level of robustness because if it's not going to be robust then it will break halfway through and I need to program the new version of the macro to adjust for breaking halfway through. Um, which I'm not 100% sure how to pull that off, but I think there might be a way. I know there's like a default way to delete the total CSVs files and even that is too complicated by UI visions method um, but I don't know if there's a good way that I, I'll have to think of it some way to put a marker or delete specific lines see and I put that card in the graveyard now isn't that gonna let them activate the card So, this is just a random person here that I saw retweeted. Apparently, he's a writer, designer, a proper husband, and a proud husband and father. Um, Samuel Horton. I have no idea if he has done anything. Maybe he works with Mystery Science Theater 3000. Um, regardless, let's just assume he's a random person and he put this top 25 games here as far as a chart 
and boy is it kind of a random collection and maybe that's a good thing maybe that highlights how there is rather large amounts of randomness that can happen amongst gamers and that they aren't all just uh, Dota players um, and yeah you've got like World of Warcraft it looks like here being highlighted in Starcraft stuff and then you have Elden Ring and then you have Mist in Heaven and then you have Arkham Asylum and um, Arkham City and then you have Halo and then you have Fable and Skyrim and Diablo 4 and I think that might be King's Quest 5 or 11 Super Mario World, Minecraft, Battlefront, GoldenEye 007, Smash Bros. Uh, a pretty wide variety there. Um, all Western games, except for, I guess, Super Mario World. Uh, but, yeah. It definitely highlights a issue, certainly, around... Um, how difficult it really would be to try and quantify and make a top 10 top 25 list of games I can say hey portal 1 portal 2 some of my favorite games out there um, but once I start trying to get to number four or number five in a list or even try and keep them in order it's very difficult and personally I kind of come from an opinion that I'm not sure you really should have a top list that that is very much a comic booky mentality in my mind but it's like who do you think is stronger Batman or Superman when in reality you should just enjoy video games or any form of medium and just say hey I enjoyed that uh, let's watch it once and then once I've forgotten it maybe 10 years down the line or longer I'll go back and enjoy it again but I'm just not of the opinion that somebody should be obsessed about something and just play it non-stop or play it once a year or even um, I think that's where some of the perhaps on the spectrum kids who play Minecraft really fall apart is that they're too obsessive about that one thing and certainly when I was younger I was fairly obsessive about things too um, uh, but yeah I guess thankfully I grew out of it eventually and, and enjoyed the idea of diversity having a steam account and having that steam backlog really helps you enjoy games the way I believe they should be enjoyed in the same way movies should probably be enjoyed that everybody should watch many many movies once and enjoy them on some level um, but it shouldn't be the thing that becomes a part of your personality or that you're talking about or that you're making lists on um, having a top 10 list for me doesn't really do much for me it, I don't really a point in defining myself by my likes that much uh, that I need to categorize things or, or put it in a list format I could just say hey I like this or hey I didn't like it and that's very much the case of what happens often when I'm playing games and making pre-recorded footage is that I will have just a case um, where I play a game and I'll say hey, it was all right uh, I would recommend playing it once, but I'm not going to ever really be an advocate that somebody should play a game a second time or a third time. Yeah, there are definitely some games, unfortunately, that are built like that, though, where you are asked to um, To play a game a second time with a new game plus and in a significant percentage of games that do have those new game plus elements it's not really worth playing um, Resident Evil 4 
even this gotten to a point where it's really going to be difficult to justify going back and playing the original Resident Evil 4 a second time. Um, when you could go and play the remaster of Resident Evil 4. Instead. XYZ summons here counted towards the festival XYZ summons. That would be great. But I don't think they do. Particularly in the case of this list, when you look at it, there's clearly sequels in DLC that are being included taking up precious uh, slots in the top 25 when talking about games as series if they happen to be series might make more sense um, even if you really only like Mist and Riven and you don't haven't even played Mist 3, 4, or 5 the Mist series um, or an original Mist series would be probably fine. Let's keep on playing. Um, Try not to lose momentum. I'm still playing all the games that I on my cell phone. Still haven't. Played. Um, I pulled the trigger on Memento Mori and actually linked the account, uh, the game to my Google account. So that's the final step of saying I'm gonna keep it for a while. Um, I I had already been accepting friend requests and joining guilds and things like that so I was interacting with the community um, there is definitely still problems in that of the games I have stuck with it is not enough gameplay that I would like but that is also because I'm just not making pre-recorded footage I'm, I'm trying to distract myself playing on the phone instead of scheduling videos which I should just be scheduling videos. Um, yeah, nothing has gotten to the point where I've found scheduling vi videos tolerable. It's just a nightmare. Um, and I, I can't imagine that anything is going to make it better. It's just a bunch of paper pushing. Um, I've automated it to make it as easy as possible, but even then. The automation takes up the computer, and it's just a weird thing. Uh, another weird thing I realized is there is just not a USB to PC, something that you could control via OBS or something like that, um, on air light. Um, it's... It probably wouldn't be that hard. To get a USB camera and then wire a relay to a light that lights up when the camera is turned on and turn on that camera input via OBS. That would probably waste a lot of resources. Um, but yeah, there's, there's not a way to really differentiate where if you were just pulling power out of a USB plug, which most USB controlled on-air lights that are cheap would do that, there's no way to just toggle the power on or off via plugging it into a computer. 
you have to send some kind of on signal, some kind of off signal. Like ideally what you'd want is something that connected through web sockets to OBS and then wirelessly knew if you're if you were recording or streaming at the time and then the power source and the on-air light can be anywhere you want to put it far far away as long as it's on the same internet um, or probably on the same local area network but yeah there, there really isn't anything like that there is a non-official uh, to your smart home desktop app that maybe could control a outlet that you could plug an on hair light to. Um, but yeah, pretty much since day one that has been an issue. It's just not an easy way to say, hey, I'm on air, don't interrupt me. Um, So, yeah, I probably will resolve just to use my pre to your smart home um, wireless outlets setup. I have these outlets with a little remote control and I'll probably just use that and when I turn on the lights it will turn on the on air light. But there are also very often times where the... I turn off the lights in my room to while I'm still recording and streaming. And inherently, if you just have, if you leave the on-air light on for en enough hours, there's a high chance people are just gonna ignore it anyways. So I guess I don't need so much an on-air light as I need maybe a little on-air taser that would just zap people or hiss at people if they tried to come near and yeah they don't make anything like that either I'm sure um, this is another blow certainly to what Microsoft is really uh, getting with its Activision Blizzard merger in that Hearthstone team has been hit with 10 members of staff being laid off, made redundant. Um, this is continuously going to be the case, I imagine, is that um, that Activision is going to try and lay off as many people as possible so as much money as possible goes into the pockets of Bobby Kodak, I would assume. Or Bobby Kodak is just laying off people because Microsoft would have laid off these same people. Because there is probably a decent amount of redundancy. Um, Hearthstone has long since lost its following and it really lost its soul at some point as a game and started becoming a very different game with the auto chess setup and that only helped it for so long whereas there's just been no talk whatsoever of Hearthstone. I couldn't even tell you what the most recent update for Hearthstone is. Um, it, it must have had at least a dozen updates since I stopped playing Hearthstone and I haven't seen any advertisement, any talk of this at all. This is more evidence in my mind potentially of Microsoft really just being a corporate protectionist and covering Bobby Kodak's butt or doing Bobby Kodak a major favor by acquiring Activision Blizzard uh, because Honestly, if I was the boss at above the person in charge of this Activision Blizzard merger, I would I would be really upset with what the final product is going to be when you get it.
because you're going to have a whole bunch of intellectual property and then no real player base and no real support base of programmers. Uh, you're going to have to hand Hearthstone over to a whole new team, which may not be a terrible idea. On the other hand, you look at Hearthstone laying off 10 members and it's like, well, that was probably just the skeleton crew anyways. They probably weren't doing anything that interesting. And Ben Brode, who was proclaimed to be the creative genius around Hearthstone, he left and made Marvel Snap, and Marvel Snap's not as good as Hearthstone either. So whatever actual talent was in Hearthstone, or whatever luck happened to make Hearthstone such an interesting game, it seemed like it dissolved and disappeared. I don't think there's an actual person that can be named that was the uh, actual creator of the success of early Hearthstone. If anything, it was the combination of the team, and as people get laid off or burned out, it's just how that team was feeling at the very beginning. Um, So it's probably a little unfair, but it is my thought, certainly, that almost all employees at Activision Blizzard are burned out. Bobby Kodak burned them out, and Bobby Kodak is effectively a corporate burnout himself in that all he wants to do is be profitable and possibly rub elbows with other uh, politicians and rich people, which honestly that might be the, the real value in acquiring Activision Blizzard is all of a sudden you might see less fighting with the FTC for future mergers. It might be that the Activision Blizzard merger acquisition, we should just call it an acquisition really, um, is literally just to get Bobby Kodak and his relationships and his talent in snoozing rich politicians so it can be a speed bump so that they can continue to acquire them. I said in the last stream, um, I bet the FTC, I would heavily suspect that the FTC is going to make it even more difficult for Microsoft to acquire any other companies after this Activision Blizzard merger goes through and that the court cases will be thought through a lot more and it will uh, be fought a lot harder and a lot better. Um, maybe Bi Bobby Kodak stops that from happening. Although, if that was really the case, then why is Bobby Kodak not performing that same duty with this merger? So, actually, that uh, thought falls falls apart once you think it through. So then it just really is corporate protectionist in my mind. That they're just saying this rich white guy in Bobby Kodak, even though it seems like everybody hates him and everybody would love to see him gone, is getting uh, protected by Microsoft and very possibly directly by somebody like Phil Spencer. Um, and yeah. Maybe this whole merger is nothing more than a scheme to give a golden parachute to Bobby Kodak so he can retire or have a nice cushy job for a little bit longer. this point it is worth mentioning that I really wouldn't want to see like a reboot of Hearthstone I could see maybe rebooting it straight up but then that betrays all the people who've been playing it up until this point uh, making like a Hearthstone 2 the, the card game mechanic and the cards there certainly could go on but 
Yeah. I, I would rather them just make a new card game to try again. And as much as I may complain about the fact that Microsoft is looking like they really just are going to end up with the um, IPs of the games and hoping that the thought that they now own Call of Duty means that there will be new Call of Duties that will be potentially Xbox exclusives uh, gets people to buy Game Pass. Um, Maybe that is just for the better because maybe in the idea of Microsoft just getting the IPs and then shaking off all the employees, something amazing could happen there. But I mean, you really are just praying for a miracle there. If you're saying 0% of all the talent of Activision Blizzard is actually going to transfer over to Microsoft because then you have to assume that Microsoft has as much, if not more, talent. And I don't know if they really do, uh, particularly they don't have free talent who aren't working on anything else. Free as in their time, not free as in pay. Um, GameDeveloper.com has the same story. And what's interesting on this screenshot is I have no idea who any of these characters are. Um, if these are Hearthstone characters, they had to have been added later. And they really don't even look like they are in the right art style for what Hearthstone had to show. Um, The rumored Horizon Forbidden West Complete Edition has been announced for PC and PS5. Uh, it's coming to uh, consoles next week and will make it to PC in 2024. Um, which, that's just going to be the main base game and the Burning Shore expansion and all the digital bonuses including soundtrack, art book, comic book, and in-game items. For sixty dollars, which yeah, that may convince a few more people to buy Horizon um, Forbidden West, but you still kind of have the major problem of it at Horizon Forbidden West being the sequel to the original Horizon game. Just not being that good of a game and not being that well received and instead of the um, instead of the the creators of Horizon Forbidden West trying to in any way improve even little quality of life things in Forbidden West they mostly have done nothing other than tweeting about being pro lgbtq plus which in this case was just a rather large distraction for them which is definitely a main complaint about a lot of the sjw's and armchair activists as they say they become so obsessed about their political movement, their political beliefs, that they that it literally gets in the way of their job requirements. Whereas conservatives who want everything to stay the same as it always was will say you just didn't talk politics in the office at all because why talk politics when the politics that have been established are exactly what you want. But there is certainly an argument to that. If I was a boss, I could say, hey, no talking politics in the office to all the employees. And I, I would definitely want to try and maintain that kind of work environment. 
Um, and in fact, you can pretty much make an argument to say, don't talk about anything other than work at work. Uh, let's just do the work and be done and go home early, is my thought. I think management in a lot of ways creates their own problems a lot of times by having a rigid hourly schedule and paying people hourly um, and then creating scenarios where people are sitting around with nothing to do and they're bored. Uh, Sensor Gaming has retweeted this refused classification, uh, which is an archive and guide to censorship in Australia, which I guess I'll start following them on Twitter. Um, although, noticeably, I think they're covering more than just video games. Um, and the thing he retweeted here is that Mugen Souls and Mugen Souls Z had been emerated for the PlayStation 3 releases and the uncut Nintendo Switch versions from East Asia Soft are both banned in Australia. Um, which banned means with use classification and they legally have to be. Uh, um, they have to be classified to be sold in Australia. It is also worth mentioning certainly that um, the Australian government kind of has a hate for Asian things, Japanese things in particular, but just Asian things anyways. Australia I guess technically is its own little continent so you wouldn't really call Australians Asians. I don't think Australians particularly think of themselves as Australians, uh, as Asians either. Um, but yeah, they've had a history to say the least. And so they definitely don't, they don't like anything anime. They don't like anything from Japan, even if it was a, like, a realistic 3D AAA game from Japan, they would give it a harder look. Not that they're, they go particularly easy on any games. There's been a lot of games that have been refused classification in Australia exclusively. And yeah, there's just a very conservative way of thinking very right-leaning uh, government in Australia and the people tend to kind of either not care about that um, or they just don't or, or they, they think the same way too um, inherently there's not a lot of diversity in Australia the aboriginals yeah, all pretty much not in the east coast with the cities where, where the Australian government and the Aust Australians uh, live and so it's just all Australians with the same descendants, same culture, same way of thinking no, no real diversity of thought, no real diversity of races and and things like that and when you have such an isolated uh, group of people that are so uniform and yeah they tend not to be accepting of other cultures or other ideas outside cultures or outside ideas weirdly New Zealand is rather progressive and I wonder if it isn't really the case that all the progressive people left Australia at some point or were kicked out of Australia and all the conservative people stayed and they just naturally separated or segregated from each other. 
Hmm. Uh, the Refuse classification site says the game is containing in-game purchases linked to elements of chance, such as paid loot boxes, will receive a minimum classification of M. Games si containing simulated gambling, such as social casino games, will be given a minimum classification of R18+. Plus. Yeah. When you start at that point in the classification system in Australia, I believe is a point system basically. You don't have a lot of room for a game to completely re be refused classification. Moving on, the Famitsu review scores from Kometsu for issues 18 17 are out. The Crew Motor Fest got 35 out of 40. Um, the Game of Life got 31 out of 40. NBA 2K24 got 31 out of 40. Starfield 34 out of 40. Beating, being beaten by the Crew Motor Fest. And then Sword Art Online Last Recollection 31 out of 40. And they're noticing here on Sword Art Online, the main story takes about 25 hours to clear and 40 hours with side activities. So it seems like anything that is a little bit open as you do tends to get this extra description of the length of it. And I guess that's an interesting thought, certainly, as to is it more important to know the amount of time you'll spend in an RPG than you would in other kinds of games. It might very well be the way gamers just think. We still really are at a point where Starfield feels like it's just not as important or impactful as it should have been. I just don't feel like people are, are having an amazing story experience with Starfield. Or people even really cared to discuss the experience in Starfield. And yeah, I could definitely see a case where they're just going to eventually add interesting more interesting DLC later on and with that more interesting DLC you're going to see maybe get a little bit better although it may very well be very very close to say Fallout 4 where Fallout 4's content was none of that interesting either, and it did well enough, but it certainly didn't blow people out of the water like Skyrim did. There may be just an active attempt here to not to to manage expectations and not create a game that is too good. Because I, I definitely could see the argument that Skyrim was too good of a game and it caused a lot of people to only play Skyrim and nothing else for too long of an amount of time. Although in Bethesda's case it wouldn't really have mattered that much because it's not like Bethesda made any other games in the next 4 to 10 years after Skyrim was originally released. Um, Just win here. We should be able to. If we can do this, then activate this, and then summon this. Let's go ahead and 
take this one. Activate this. Gumatsu says a game called Hollow Cocoon is launching in December. I assume this is a horror game of some sort. Let's see what Steam has to show for it. Meanwhile, let's continue the play. Uh, yeah, I remember this horror game. First, kind of teased. It's weirdly not on the ball list though, so I need to, I guess, make a short on it. There is also a statue maker called King Heads, claims that Sony has told them to destroy all the PlayStation 3 in stock, and it's now telling pre-order customers to contact Sony about refunds, um, which to me, I guess this feels like they have um, had some kind of falling through here with Sony. They've had Last of Us Part 2, Ellie statues, Jack 3 statues, and God of War statues, and busts. Hmm. Yeah. They are definitely trying to lay all the blame on Sony. It would be funny if this is also part of the uh, Sony hack and there's just a miscommunication going on. Uh, but who knows. It is a little weird that we haven't seen a company um, hire a hacking group to, to get revenge on a partnership that fell through or a competitor. It's probably just too incredibly risky to do that and expect to get away with it, but yeah, I could see some sleazy boss somewhere, or some company saying, hey, let's just ha hire a hacking group to hack Sony and make them pay for screwing us over. The only thing I can really say, I've never heard of Gaming Heads, but these visuals don't look amazing. And that, that is kind of a problem in general with statues here. You can even see the gun is like bent. Um, whether this is solid cast or whether this is just rubber, I don't know. The, the, the face and the details are all wrong. I feel like this body type and the bust size here is all wrong, particularly since she has a gun on her back and a backpack on her back. Um, I wouldn't be 100% surprised if there's model makers that say use pre-existing body molds and just change the heads. I think it, it, it would potentially make a lot of sense to do that if you could get away with that. Um, instead of making something brand new that, that's kind of what it feels like it feels like this neck is a little thick and a little too long and that this chest and bust size potentially was from some other statue this easily could just be a generic dude with a different head on it uh, in the early production steps uh, but yeah i i've I very rarely have seen good statues, particularly uh, in a realistic western style of video game characters. You get slightly better chances when you aren't as close to the uncanny valley and when you're just like making an anime girl figurine. Um, but even there, the, the quality widely varies. You can get some really, really cheap bad ones. Um, 
and they're all very expensive. Um, and I would say in general we probably have not improved or done very well with figurine design anyways. Like maybe Barbie has been consistently making Barbies and maybe consistently improving those dolls but everything else is pretty bad you, you have either wild art styles like the brats dolls that don't look that good or you have action figures with uh bendable joints like ninja turtles uh which i don't think are really any better um and yeah there, there really aren't a lot of action figures being made these days you would think that if 3D printing had gotten any better, but it hasn't, uh, you might have seen people printing their own action figures. Lego and their minifigs and their Lego Friends dolls are all uh, are all not realistic, and that they're fine for what they are, but they they aren't really pretty. I've never been a huge fan, anyways, of the um, the idea of having statues. Like, really, just kind of a wasteful hobby. I could see having one or two if you really love the character, but I think of them very much like bookends. That they they can make something look a little bit prettier as a bookend as a something slightly different to have on the shelf uh, to display but that's about as much as I can think of as well. statues and in, in the case of video game statues none of them look great uh, you can see the painting here is struggling in my opinion to, to maintain detail without also having color bleed here you can see like black on this arm cloth kind of bleeding into the red shirt here. Like, I imagine that is also in part why I never really got into, I, I could never really understand or truly understand the um, Warhammer 40k tabletop players who spend so much time making their own statues and painting their own statues. It really is just a a labor of love for a medium result. Uh, this YouTube channel, the LEGO Video Game Museum, put out eight hours ago that this would be the eighth anniversary for LEGO the Dimensions from TT Games. Um, it was released on September 27th of 2015 for PS3, PS4, Xbox 360, Xbox One, Wii U. Um, which this highlights the last real effort of a um, Toys to Life venture. Starfield, I guess, technically did come out after this, but Starfield really hasn't really abandoned the Toys to Life concept fairly quickly. Um, I don't know what these six signs here are all about. These stickers. And these look like these are Peggy ratings with a Peggy 7 here. Although, I don't know what these extra stickers are all about. Um, when you would start LEGO's Toys to Life, you would have Batman, Wildstyle, and Gandalf as a character in the Portal of Power. Then you would have had to bought a whole bunch of extra characters um, to include those characters because they all have little NFC tags just at the bottom of it. Um, 
none of these characters and minifigs work really with any other Lego set, unfortunately. Um, while they are interesting minifigs, unless you own a specific collection of minifigs that you have put on, put on the wall or on display, the, every character stands out visually as just being from its own universe. Uh, and there almost certainly was would have been room that Lego will now not never bother to think about as far as making a Lego set around Wizard of Oz, for instance. Or I think this is Golem here. Uh, it took them. They did make some Lord of the Rings sets, but they never made a Wizard of Oz set. They never made a Portal set. Um, they did make a um, Simpsons set, but they didn't make a Back to the Future set. Le Legends of Chima sets haven't been done in a long time. Scooby-Doo set, no, no Scooby-Doo van set, which certainly made sense. No Wild Style or Lego Movie sets that were amazingly good. It's also worth pointing out that while some of the packs would only unlock characters, or characters in a small level, I'm not even sure. Um, there was like three levels. There was like sets that would just unlock characters, I think. Then there was sets that would unlock characters in one small level. And then sets that were really, they were all too expensive. But they would unlock characters and a, um, and a large collection of levels, maybe three or four levels. They're also completely ignoring that the vehicles, because almost every character set included either one character in a vehicle or two characters in a vehicle. I can't remember, but there's not a single vehicle even being shown here as an option. Lego has since tried one other effort as far as bringing their toys to life, not having per se a toys to life video game aspect um, and yet and that hasn't really succeeded either maybe with a next generation of phones if they have object identification chips uh, artificial image detection chips built in I could see maybe you could then point your mid-range fairly cheap um, uh, camera phone add a Lego minifig and then maybe they could actually identify what minifig that is and scan it and put it into some kind of game um, that would be an interesting thought certainly is if we could get the technology to that point then maybe Lego would try again but inherently Lego is a plastic work selling company first and foremost and they're they're decent at that, but they're not even as good as they should be at doing that. Um, and they most recently admitted that they are giving up on using recycled plastics in their bricks because they, they're claiming at least that it didn't actually save any carbon emissions to do it. I assume they are still working to try to make plant-based plastic bricks for the types of bricks that that works with, but they're not, they have yet to show a way to make rigid building bricks with that. They, they're making more flexible plant pieces out of plastic based, uh, plant based plastic. We have a uh, Yuka on the chat saying any goth girls, if you're, I assume you're talking about Lego Dimensions and, um, Wildstyle? Kind of is a goth girl, I would say. Um, so yes. Any others? Um, as far as the entirety of Lego Dimensions and the collection of characters, I would say no. Like I, I don't think there was any other um, any other characters like that. Um, maybe I I haven't. I didn't pay enough attention to the second uh, Lego movie, 
So maybe there was a point where Unikitty was dressed kind of like a little bit of punk. Um, maybe a little goth. Um, in, in, to be fair, I'd say Wildstyle probably is much more punk than she is goth. Um, and if I think about the entirety of all the licenses and all the sets that LEGO has ever done, I would say there's probably not any goths out there uh, from official LEGO sets. But you can almost certainly find a goth minifig from a third party uh, developer because there is more than an enough fans of of minifigs in Lego so yeah a quick search here we'll just go straight to images here on duck duck to go oh nope I actually gotta play first or I'm going to die and I'm playing ranked so I'm not willing to die ways I would say goth is really just kind of a style a clothing style and maybe a little bit of a dour attitude not a manic pixie kind of the opposite of a manic pixie dream girl attitude but if anything it's it's more of a TV TV and movie archetype than a way to really live your life um, But yeah, you're seeing that there's a custom, several custom minifigs here of people in black outfits, yeah, kind of goth. You can't really get too much detail either. And as we get away from the minifigs and DuckDuckGo just starts showing me goth girls, with safe search off, I probably shouldn't scroll any further down. Uh, I would say probably a lot of the natural desire towards goth girls is either a similar liking of the same types of things as far as music and, and attitude and just the way they carry themselves but also I'd say goth girls are not reserved and people get fairly bored with reserved girls that are not willing to um, not willing to say try to dress attractively or, or dress the way they want or act the way they want um, Definitely is kind of a fetish. But yeah, also that is just a bit of an off topic thought too. So let's move on. Uh, Netflix, according to Gamatsu, has announced a Tomb Raider The Legend of Laura Croft anime series. Uh, Netflix pretty much is very much stretching the definition of what anime is to its own means. Um, basically they're calling anything that is an adult cartoon an anime series. Um, and sometimes they are hiring Japanese animators to or Asian animators to animate their shows but the target audience is clearly the 
Western world, the United States and North America world, as far as a Laura Croft series. And so that doesn't really qualify as anime anymore. Original, original first market, first target is not Japan, then you shouldn't use the Japanese phrase for animation. With this screenshot, you can see there's still an emphasis with the bows, and this feels like this is closer to the rebooted series as far as the top. It doesn't really feel like it's a tank top uh, like the original Lara Croft. Andrew Murphy's on the chat says yo what's up. So well, let me just look at this minute long teaser trailer for this Netflix series and see if there's anything interesting. It's starting with Lara Croft pulling a bow back and then it j jumps to black and shows her jumping down a hole. Um, and then she's looking at a mural, so she's doing the Indiana Jones thing. It looks like there may be perhaps more direct images. She's looking at a picture of all the characters from the rebooted series. So clearly this is in the timeline of the rebooted series. And some of the buildings in the background hint that she might spend some time in China or in an Asian country because I'm seeing like those types of buildings so yeah I, I would have to question the logic at the moment for Netflix to make an animated series based on the reboot of Lord Croft when Crystal Dynamics is, um, is moving towards re-releasing the original Tomb Raider games and moving back into a Laura Croft, the original Laura Croft depiction. Uh, even this hairstyle here just doesn't really scream Laura Croft. Although it is possible, certainly since this is an animated series, that um, this has been in development for a long time and maybe it got caught up in the strike and maybe they're hoping the strike is not done since they have that tentative agreement. Although I haven't heard anything more about that. Um, and so maybe they're announcing it now because they were just needing a few more voice lines to be recorded and they expect it to be done. Speaking of strikes, I misspoke, I believe, in the last stream saying I thought it was the CWA, uh, GWA that had authorized this strike on the video game on his, um, uh, video game industry. Um, it was SAG-AFTRA members that voted to authorize striking authority to the negotiating team of the, against the video game industry in general, or the companies that they're actually negotiating with. Um, so that inherently is a problem right now is that you have voice actors for video games in the Screen Actors Guild SAG-AFTRA um, and SAG-AFTRA potentially having a very different emphasis and a di very different focus compared to the Game Workers Alliance as a subsidiary of the Communication Workers Alliance, which to the Communication Workers Alliance being made up of mostly people who worked at cell phone com at phone companies, not cell phone companies, phone companies, um, maybe cell phone companies now, um, they're going to have a different emphasis too 
but it probably makes more sense for the GWA to be in charge of all the contracts and all the negotiations instead of having this split divide of having two different unions um, whether or not you're a voice actor working in video games or whether you're a programmer animator quality assurance tester like every other position that is at a non-management associate level really is likely to be under GWA um, it would be the equivalent of there being a SAG-AFTRA for the actors um, and then a different union for all the filmers um, the boom mic operators background actors potentially soundboard operators lighting operators uh, gaffers uh, and maybe that is also the case in Hollywood that, that there is more of a split there um, and that there are two unions but it doesn't make a lot of sense the ideas of a rising tide rising all boats or solidarity really get thrown out the window when you have multiple unions competing for different things um, meanwhile the management will always be competing for the exact thing to pay everybody the very least and and uh, hoard as much profit as possible and then Gamato also said that this game a thousand X resist has been delayed to quarter one of 2024 with anything that this kind of feels like this is the problem overall with the Tokyo game show and when it comes out and happens is that you get a lot of games that either get delayed while trying to create hype at the Tokyo game show or they are announced with dates for the first time but the dates are way way too far away and it just doesn't work like even now like mid-september is just too long too late in the year to be announcing things or um, or trying to promote things that aren't going to come out by Christmas uh, video games Chronicle also has an article that says the payday 3 studio Starbreeze is looking into potentially removing the games always on requirement in the future following a ma major server issues at launch I I think there's definitely just a case there that there's not a great amount of good reception happening around payday 3 if you even are paying enough attention to know payday 3 is out I'm scrolling down my Twitter feed just to see if any new news has happened in the past hour Senior editor for The Verge. Why am I following this guy? I'm not. I don't know why I'm seeing seeing this. Oh, I'm on the wrong tab on it. Twitter. That's why. Uh, but I did catch this. Apparently, the senior editor for The Verge, Tom Warren, says the FTC is planning to resume its administrative case against Microsoft's proposed acquisition soon. It will commence 21 days after the Ninth Circuit rules on the FTC appeal, the administrative hearing will be held virtually. Um, which that's not really new news. It's just easy to um, 
it's easy to not really recognize or remember that that was always going to happen like the part that microsoft beat on the ftc was that the ftc did not get a preliminary injunction to pause the merger um, so microsoft and activision blizzard are free to merge and that after the merger goes through the ftc can continue its case and potentially the government would say all right the ftc has won its case now you have to unmerge and, and that's just very hard to do certainly and the perception of that being very hard to do may very likely cause a judge to not side that right that way um It would be pretty government-like, though, to straight up say, nope, we're the government and what we say goes, so we are going to force you to unmerge. I still um, heavily suspect, though, that the FTC is not going to win on any of its merits because if it had a high chance of winning on its merits it would have won on the preliminary injunction and the fact that it didn't does not speak well towards the case apparently Master Chief's armor and gravity helm hammer are going to be added to Rainbow Six Siege for whatever that's worth. Yeah, the FTC basically has to continue with their case because of one of two reasons. Either they have to continue, so because they're wasting government funds anyways, they have to justify that they really think that it's worth it um, or they're continuing because the people in charge of the FTC are literally sabotaging uh, themselves because somebody got put in charge of the FTC by some way probably political appointment to destroy the organization from it within and that is an accusation that definitely has been made is that uh, most recently Trump by political appointment put a bunch of people in charge of a bunch of different departments of the government and they either were incompetent or intentionally sabotaging the the efficiency the the authority of those elements of the government Yeah. Although, in the case of FTC, uh, I think the lady in charge of the FTC was actually appointed by Biden, so let's, let's just be fair and assume that's actually the case. And she's just seemingly doing a really bad job. It's also important to point out that a lot of the court cases in trials were being held by a special internal judge and court system um, in the FTC and there were, so their own hand-picked judge was telling them that their, their efforts and their case was weak
Okay, so moving on to the the regular news. Sorry, I went quiet there. Yeah. After several bits of struggle, I was only able to get my macro to make data points on a few of the top 10. So games like Noaka Blade Point here are just totally missing. And that's probably due to it just not being, the information not being submitted. Not that Noaka Blade Point has just dropped down to below 100,000. Same is true for War Thunder, Wallpaper Engine, Source SDK. And there might even be a bug here where Cyberpunk 2077 really hasn't jumped up to 238,000 players. It may be that the information got doubled and that would be a mistake, certainly. So it's hard to really trust this data. If you're following this data, it looks like Dota has dropped down quite a bit and Baldur's Gate 3 has dropped down quite a bit. And Cyberpunk 27 has gone up quite a bit. So all I can really say today is that my macro chart here needs a lot more work. It's not ready, as it were. It's not ready for prime time. Okay. In this case, I'm getting rid of all the cards attached to it, so he's going to grab the card, but honestly, I don't think that's going to do anything anyways. He's still going to own more than enough to win. The shoot -em up fest is still going on, otherwise it's just your average sales. Doesn't seem like there's anything else going I did look up... Um, Steam Deck physical mods, there's not a lot, and it seems pretty obvious that people are missing a trick here. A professionally molded or just very nicely 3D printed back to the Steam Deck would be really appreciated. If you can make the back of the Steam Deck, let's see if we can get a picture to use as a reference here. Um, almost certainly they're not going to bother to show the back of the Steam Deck. Like, there, there really aren't a lot of physical mods. But yeah, you see how this part curves in with the buttons and then um, you have a fairly thin part here. If you replace that back where it was twice as thick except for at the bottom here where the deck dock is expected to be so you make a bump out here and then you make the back side kind of bulge um, all the way to the top and make it twice as thick the you leave yourself a lot of room to add a little bit more cooling um, which seems to be the main mod for the Steam Deck is that the, there is this feeling that it overheats and gets really hot. You could add a ton of space to easily double your battery life from the Steam Deck and you could have a spot that was long enough to have a standard NVMe um, disk uh, device if not two. Uh, so you, just like in a little extension cord where then you could have a fully replaceable large NVMe thing. Um, the only physical mod I saw that 
seemed like it was fairly doable. Somebody just put like a card holder, glued it to the back, and then put a credit card micro SD holder in that cold card credit card holder. Um, but everything else is fairly ridiculous. But yeah, I think if you could 3D print a, a thick boy, just call it something like that, the thick boy back of the Steam Deck, and then have a way where you could add a second battery to it, um, which maybe that would be fairly different, difficult to do that. You, you probably need a battery balancing board, uh, but that wouldn't be too hard. But I guess that's kind of all you would want to uh, in a new Steam Deck is just better battery uh, life. Um, there is a new device that I just saw that is like 10 inch screen and it's just giant. It The controllers stop and the screen just goes up for another inch and a half at the top but it does noticeably have like twice the amount of battery life compared to the Steam Deck and in this new device if it's the same one I'm thinking of instead of having square touch pads they have circular touch pads uh, but they do have touch pads but that doesn't support the Steam OS and it really is the Steam OS you're buying into more than the um, hardware itself. Yes, you could see better Bluetooth 5.1, 5.2, 5.3. You could see better Wi Fi functionality. Uh, maybe even better speakers. It says it has HD haptics in it already. I did see a physical mod to replace these thumbsticks if you needed to do that. The problem still is the price on a lot of these too. It's just really, really expensive. Even getting the refurbished ones are too expensive on the Steam Deck for what you'd like to pay. Well, I was going to play more Yu-Gi-Oh, but if I'm going to do that, I guess I'll have to do it after I go through all the news. Um, so, yeah, this will be an interesting experiment, I guess, as to um, how, thing, how to do a stream. I got all the daily quests done, and I didn't make any progress in the festival quest, which is... Not surprising. It does say XYZ summon a monster in the festival or fusion summon a monster in the festival. Um, so, yeah, because I streamed yesterday to catch up, I caught up too much. So, we're going to go through all of the Video Games Chronicle news and Gamatsu news and game developer news and all of that. And then we'll, if I feel like it, get back to playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Maybe I should always do like a Yu-Gi-Oh sandwich and that way if people are here for the Yu-Gi-Oh they will, maybe will stick around for the news. That's not really how I was scheduling things out but it might work. A ton um, a ton of old news almost certainly is going to pop up here but we do have new news. Uh, here you have Kamiya saying, I won't disappoint you, quote. Thanks, and he's thanking fans for support after quitting Platinum. Sub quote here is, I'll keep making games and do my best. Of course, this would all be translated from Japanese. Um, but yeah. That does paint a slightly better light on it, although there is still a lot of question as to just how this really will play out. We'll just have to wait and see um, if it will be for the better or the worst or if it will just be for different. It may just be different and not really objectively better or worse for Kamiya to leave Platinum and go on 
to make games somewhere else. Maybe forming his own company, maybe working for another company. Hmm. Then the iPhone 15 Pro version of Resident Evil 4 Remake is going to cost $60, which seems too expensive. And then October's PlayStation Plus Essential Headliner games have leaked. It's going to include Callisto Protocol and Farming Simulator 22. Sony, I guess, is still investigating the situation. We have no update on the claim that they've been hacked all of Sony has been hacked not just PlayStation hmm. Ubisoft believes that stream game streaming will eventually take off and it will happen very quickly Ubisoft almost has to make that argument though considering how much they've put into the their Uplay service despite it not being received well and in the fact that Microsoft has just handed over streaming rights to Ubisoft in the UK to get the Activision Blizzard merger to go through. Um, yeah, the company is saying streaming is going to transform the businesses like it is done for film and TV, which that is really damning with uh, faint praise because the film and TV industry has been transformed in a very poor way in their opinion I would imagine because of streaming left to their own devices film and TV would have definitely preferred that you would have never been able to even rent VHS's and that all movies would have been shown only in theaters at a premium price and once it left the theater it would you just wouldn't be able to see it at all and TV definitely would have preferred that all TV would have been on um, pay-per-view or cable television and you would have just paid ridiculous amounts of money each month for that so yeah if Ubisoft thinks that they're going to be a winner in the streaming they are really and and comparing that to film and TV they they're really joking themselves because the likes of Hulu Netflix Amazon Prime Video Apple TV video like all of those services well maybe not Hulu so much but all the other services or brand new competitors to TV and film they weren't the original film and TV production companies by any means Hulu is a combination of TV channel streaming services that so it's slightly different but Hulu is making originals now every now and then again also it's also interesting here in that you see what ubisoft thinks of itself as far as the games it's using in this screenshot or what video games chronicle thinks of ubisoft and that you have assassin's creed mirage i believe being shown here the upcoming sands of not sands of time but prince of persia game that doesn't really make any sense then you have two military games that I really couldn't even tell you what the actual names of these military games are and then you have a racing game I couldn't tell you the name of and then I think Ubisoft's pirate game is what this is and I don't think that's out yet either I'm not sure any of these games are out yet um, never really got a follow-up on the riots in France either I imagine they may have died down a little bit but I don't think the people of France are particularly happy at the at the moment and that may too affect Ubisoft as a French company uh, let's see Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and plus 2 are coming to Steam next week um, it was available via the Epic Game Store before that point hmm. which I might be fairly interesting to see if there's a big reception there or if it just doesn't really matter this is an Activision remake if Microsoft acquires Activision Blizzard 
do they have a team that could come in and make more pro skater games or even remake the old pre pro skater games and the old Tony Hawk games again I doubt it uh, let's see we talked about this yesterday the Blizzard veteran Chris Medzin is now Warcraft's executive creative director EA Sports has delisted its FIFA back catalog from digital storefronts. The move coincides with the release of the first EA Sports Football Club game to not have the FIFA name. Um, so, imagine anybody that really cared was probably upset about that. And I imagine anybody who already owned the games can still play it, but so many of these EA sports games tend to have online elements to them that I'm not sure you you're gonna get a great experience if a game is delisted if the servers are shut down and honestly I'm not sure you get a good experience even for 12 months after you buy a game like this because they don't seem like they update the stats year after year they just make you buy the same game over and over again um, if I recall correctly, this EA Sports FC game is not being received particularly well because in part it's not really a significant difference experience from FIFA and FIFA just not evolved fast enough and not maintained its maintained a level of quality or grown the level of quality. You would think by for any annual series that there should be just consistent improvement, consistent growth. Uh, infinitum which is not realistic but you would hope that was the case uh, the game high on life has its first paid DLC being released next week well I guess leave it at that it's called high on life or is it knife on hand? No, it's high on knife, a horror themed story expansion. Uh, let's see, we talked about this Payday 3 Studio looking to remove all these online requirements as service issues plague the launch. Master Chief's arm and gravity helmet coming to Rainbow Six Siege. The statue maker gaming heads blaming Sony um, for some kind of breakup Horizon Forbidden West Complete Edition being announced apparently Alan Wake 2 is built for 30 frames per second but will have a solid performance mode Remedy says the long awaited sequel will be released in October October 27th for the PS5 Xbox Series S and X and PC via the Epic Game Store there's been a lot of mainstream video game journalists who have talked way too much about Alan Wake, their love for Alan Wake 1, and their hype around Alan Wake 2. I am looking forward to seeing if players follow suit, or if players just don't care about Alan Wake. Um, even Control, having played Control, felt like it was overhyped for the game it was. Is basically one cool sequence in, in control and then there's a lot of flying around shooting guns uh, that's not particularly that interesting um, and that's really crazy because there's definitely a lot of room for more interesting stuff to have happened in control and it just kind of doesn't happen um, the gameplay mechanic is poor compared to the story that could have been told and the story that was being told in Control and the gameplay mechanic dr drug down Control. I wouldn't be surprised if that's exactly what happens in Alan Wake 2. Also is that they try to tell a pretty ambitious story and then the story gets pulled down by the gameplay mechanics. I wouldn't also be surprised if Alan Wake 2 gets pulled down in that they are trying to tell two stories with two different protagonists when they really should just be telling one. 
Uh, we talked about Blizzard's Hearthstone team having layoffs. And then this is just all old news, and that brings us to the Komatsu news. Legend of Legacy HD Remastered was announced for the PS4 and 5, Switch, and PC. Let's see if this is on the fall list. Yes, it is. All of this news may be what we covered yesterday anyways. The case of Benedict Fox Definitive Edition for PS5 has been announced. Bike Daisuke Hashiriya Khan Rider's Spirit and Scourge Hive are coming to the PS4 and 5 and the Xbox One and Series and Switch in 2024. I don't know if that's two separate games. It looks like it's two separate games bundled as one. That's weird. Time Spinner 2 Unwoven Dream has been announced for consoles and PC. Let's see if we've got a Steam link for it. Yes, we do. Looks like it's a platformer Castlevania type game. Looks interesting enough to deserve a follow. Persona 3 Portable and Persona 4 Golden Limited Run Physical Editions have been announced for the PS4, Xbox, and Switch, noticeably not the PS5. And PS3 Portable pre-orders open September 29th. I could see people getting these limited editions since Persona is a fairly popular series, although I would say these limited editions don't even look that interesting. They're, they're not really that amazing of visuals. Hmm. Yeah, some of these collectibles might be somewhat interesting. Is the psycho guns that they shoot themselves in their heads to release a persona from which I think they really only did that in persona 3 or persona 3 portable I don't think they continued that cringe element or that edgelord element into persona 4 both of these games are available on Steam Persona 3 Portable here mostly positive with its reviews and then Persona 4 Golden overwhelmingly positive In a lot of ways, I probably should play Persona before I tried to play just a pure visual novel. The RPG dungeon crawling element of the Persona series would add some more variety to, to that. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth Details, Regions, Exploration, World Intel, Minigames, and Combat. So they've got several screenshots and information here if you want to check it out on Gamatsu although it is a weird situation where you're you're potentially spoiling yourself in a small way but if you've already played Final Fantasy 7 you should already be fairly familiar with everything you're seeing anyways um, not a hundred percent sure but I think they did confirm that in this Final Fantasy uh, 7 remake there will be a way in which Cloud can cross dress like he could in the first game and to date people of the same gender which I think he could do in the first game so there was some fear certainly that that was going to just get localized slash censored out of the game in the remake and it doesn't so far seem like that's going to be the case but we pretty much have to wait till February 29th, 2024 to see how how true and accurate the remake is to the original, which it won't be 100% true and accurate. It isn't a remaster. 
Let's see. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice sales have topped 10 million. Which, yeah, surprising success here, I would say. Um, yeah, I've been kind of surprised both by Naraka Blade Point and Sekiro as very like traditional Japanese stories that have gained a decent amount of following outside of Japan and in the West. The Legend of Legacy HD Remastered for the PS4 and 5 and Switch launches February 1st in Japan. Astra Knights of Vidal, Vida Global Beta Test is set for October 8th through the 23rd. Is, I guess it's not too much to say around that. Put that on the fall list and make a short after it. Uh, Breakers Unlock the World has a 13 minutes of gameplay if you want to check that out on Gamatsu. Archetype Arcadia for PC is coming to the West on October 24th. Hmm. Which, okay. Looks like this is a visual novel. Hmm. Hmm. So right now this game is not in the adult section on Steam it, and it doesn't support English so what I'd like to see and I almost have no way of checking this is if the mature content description here changes or if this gets put in the adult section as soon as English is supported because I would heavily suspect that there is a Japanese native speaker or at least a very fluent Japanese speaker uh, reader who approves Japanese language only games on Steam that is different from the English speaking team or per individual I'm not sure if it's a team or just one person that approves English speaking games you would think that would be the case which inherently that means there would be multiple opinions as to whether a game gets approved at all or whether the game gets forced into the adult section or not um, so it'll be interesting to see if that changes and I'll really have no way of knowing if it changes uh, it should be fairly big news if all of a sudden because a game gets an English dub then it's held to a, a different community standard effectively um, that everything with English as a language is being held to a Western or United States standard that wouldn't be fair at all but it kind of is what's going on uh final fantasy 7 ever crisis is coming to pc it's on the app store and google play at the moment so i assume this is a low polygon chibi style game being a mobile game not something that really would be that interesting play to play on PC. A story driven RPG called VED launches in 2024 for the PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. Interesting, not only do you have a last gen PS4, but you have a last gen Xbox One support for this game and no next gen support at all. I was thinking by 2024 we would stop seeing support for at least the Xbox One probably the PS4 also hmm. Neptunia Sisters for Versus Sisters for the Switch is coming to the West in 2024 which that's probably not a surprise all the Neptunia games are at least coming to the Switch 
probably more of a surprise that it isn't coming to the PS4 in the West or PS5, but that's not a big surprise either. Banisher's Ghost of New Eden has been delayed to February 13th of 2024. Let's see if we've already make, made a short on that. Basically any game that has a Steam link and puts out a press release through Gamatsu gets a gets put on the follow list and gets a short made after it. Tales Principle 2 launches November 2nd. Which, yeah. Suppose if somebody wanted to gift me this game, I would play it try to play it as fast as possible. But Otherwise, it is also the kind of game that, as long as I don't spoil myself on it, would probably be fine to play a year, two years, five years from now. Like, there's not that big of a rush. They very possibly may continue to make Tales Principles, and as long as I play Tales Principle 2 before Tales Principle 3 is, is out, I'm fine. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 Plus 2 coming to Steam on October 3rd. We already talked about that. But Gamatsu does us the actual favor of putting a link to Steam, whereas Video Games Chronicle doesn't bother. Hmm. The visual here doesn't look terrible, but it doesn't really seem like there's a lot of variety in the rooms. Yeah, it really seems like you're just in one or two locations. I heavily suspect that the mechanics are the thing that you have to really get right in skating games, not so much the level design. You could probably do a pretty poor job of level design in a skating game, and as long as the mechanics are good and the skating feels good, People will be able to find their own fun. Of course, you can't go too terrible on level design. If you put no ramps, no rails, no walls in a level, if you put, say, a skating game um, character in a forest with just a bunch of trees and grass, that would be really, really terrible level design. Um, but as long as you're in a somewhat decent urban environment honestly it would be a little interesting to see if you could mod in into the like one of the mirror's edge games skating instead of wall running you're just uh skating on the walls and instead of jumping you're jumping with the skateboard that those levels are fairly well designed to to work that way I, I, that I think they would work that way although a lot of the climbing doesn't really feel like skateboarding uh, the High on Life DLC High on Knife launches October 3rd Let's see can I get a link directly the DLC. Yes, I can. Uh, the atmospheric story driven puzzle platformer Greenfield has been announced for PC. I feel like this is the first time I've seen anything about this. Um, yeah. This all looks new to me. Looks a little weird, a little too surreal, perhaps. I I probably would give it a chance, but I'm seeing a lot of very zoomed out cinematic images, and I don't know if that is going to equate to puzzle platforming particularly well. Genshin Impact 4.1 update is now available. 
Naruto X Boruto, Ultimate Ninja Storm Connections game system, and sneak peek of special story mode trailers and screenshots are available on Gamatsu if you want to check that out. I imagine Western people are really just not getting the most recent Naruto X Boruto cartoons so or manga so I'm not sure that the Western world really is in a great position to enjoy these games like but I don't know maybe maybe they're all on Crunchyroll or something and other people have caught up on it uh, Infinity Strash Dragon Quest The Adventures of Die details its story mode beginnings if you want to check that out on Gamatsu we talked about the Famitsu issue review scores we talked about Hollow Cocoon uh, coming out and almost done Horizon Forbidden West Complete Edition There is this problem, I would say, with pretty much all games, in that you start to have secondary characters, and if you haven't played the game, you just don't know who these secondary characters are. You, at best, when advertising a game, you can convince somebody who hasn't played the, any of the game series to learn the protagonist's name, in this case, Alloy. But I couldn't for the life of me tell you anything about these characters at all. I don't even know if they play a big role in the story. Um, so yeah, one strong protagonist in general is about all you can manage to advertise. And that and maybe a sidekick. But one sidekick alone. Um, Sunshine Manor is coming to the PS4 and 5, Xbox One and Series, and Switch on October 6th. First came out on Steam. Hmm. And I overlooked it for one reason or another, or I missed it, never saw it. The last Or Crew Final Cut update is now available. Um, let's see, is this on Steam? Yes, it is. You can see it is mixed reviewed. Is it worth making a YouTube short around a mixed reviewed game? Normally, I would say no, absolutely not. But, yeah, and I guess I don't really have a good reason to not stick to that idea. So. I'm gonna not bother to make a YouTube short or put that on the fall list. A romance visual novel called Dochi no I Kasuki Desuka um, is coming to PS4 and Switch on January 25th in Japan. Um, We'll just have to wait and see if it comes to PC at any point. Um, yeah, I guess it's not worth really reading the reviews if it's not even going to come to the West, potentially. And then the PlayStation Plus monthly game lineup being announced. Uh, Callisto Protocol Farming Simulator. 22 and Weird West, no listing here of what is leaving as far as the monthly games. And then that's going to bring us to GameDeveloper.com articles. Payday 3 uh, apparently smashes and grabs 1.3 million players in its opening weekend, which is a big number certainly, even, uh, but it's pro almost certainly not the thing to emphasize on at the moment when Severe server issues have been a problem, too. This is almost certainly an example of GameDeveloper.com wanting to write a positive review or a positive article around Payday 3 
when the more newsworthy thing is hey it had severe um, server issues and you could certainly rewrite the headline to that uh, to to include that better despite severe despite server issues payday 3 um, had 1.3 million players in the opening weekend um, but they wanted to use the smashes and grabs um, headline to be cute which maybe that is the sole reason that they're writing the headline that way uh, kind of just repeating the same stories here and that Capcom is uninterested in any potential Microsoft buyout offer which doesn't matter here's the article I should have waited for before I started talking the SAG-AFTRA voice actors approve a video game strike authorization vote if these corporations aren't willing to offer a fair deal our next step will be the picket lines quote unquote um, I wouldn't mind if SAG-AFTRA wanted to be the union in charge of all game developers but even at that I, I think that there's in particular some problems with SAG after in that the actors and celebrities are kind of in charge of SAG after I believe um, I believe the person actually in charge of SAG after may be the actress who played the nanny and at some level I guess she worked as an actress and or as an actor um, so she has the most experience but it also just creates a weird situation where actors who tend to be kind of crazy are in charge of unions when perhaps more logical calmer heads should be in charge of a union but then I, at a certain point I, I am just making an argument that unions should have managers and and not be run by the actual members of the union I'm not sure that sag after is even a good union for your standard actor inherently you do have to recognize that most bit roll actors anybody who isn't just the leading lady or the leading man is getting really really screwed uh, with bad contracts no guaranteed work uh, low day rates uh, maybe higher than other jobs but still low day rates um, every time you have a case where Brad Pitt is making millions of dollars for a movie that that is inherently some of those millions are not going to any of the background actors and the bit part actors and even if that isn't so much a problem every time you have Tom Cruise or Brad Pitt starring in another movie that's one more opportunity that's being taken away from other actors to step up and become a leading man or leading lady and in movies and TV in particular it is just a terrible terrible situation in which there are not any breakout next generation actors instead there is increasing digital de-aging and just returning of older and older actors um, Arnold Schwarzenegger's career in particular is a prime example of that for every Arnold Schwarzenegger movie that was made after probably Terminator 2 um, there could have been another bodybuilder that could barely act being hired for that role um, and yet Arnold Schwarzenegger continued to work and take roles doing the best for himself but not really doing the best for a diversity of actors and in the industry moving on Phantom Liberty gives Cyberpunk 27 its highest Steam player count since launch um, which yeah 
I definitely did see that in my chart, despite my chart being broken. That a lot of people have gone back to Cyberpunk, or gone to Cyberpunk for the first time because of Phantom Liberty. Which, it's, it's almost a shame we see these miracles. It's good for Cyberpunk 2077, but it also just kind of shows the fickle nature and the easily forgotten um, boycotts of games. And that you can three, put out a game that's awful, wait three years, put out some DLC, and finally fix that game. And people will forgive that and still play the game. Particularly right now, I guess that comes down to a lot of lack of competition overall. It's not like there is anything else that really would compete with Cyberpunk 2077 at the moment. Um, let's see. Chris Smetson appointed the executive creative director of Warcraft franchise. At least GameDeveloper.com is doing us a favor of actually showing us a picture of the guy. Um, Whereas the other articles I've seen of this, they, they haven't shown me who he is. It's a shame that there isn't a more standard profile of companies or profiles of people. More of a Wikipedia style thing where you can click on their name and get to a profile page of people. Um, particularly for GameDeveloper.com, it would make a lot of sense if there was kind of a LinkedIn style profile of people. To say here's where they worked here's what they look like uh, here's where they were born here's uh, here's their age things like that things that would just help you identify the person in case there's two Chris Metzens ever in all of history um, but yeah there's nothing like that um, we kind of looked at this before War Inspector looking back at the making of Deus Ex out of spite. Quote, I'll show them. I'll make a game. You can decide for yourself whether to fight or sneak past any problem. Which, this is all around his book in this um, look back from um, Spectre that you can read here. Uh, then we had talked about the Unity developer group dissolving after the company completely eroded trust. This was the Boston U U Unity group, aka Bug. And then we've already talked about Blizzard laying off several Hearthstone developers. And then we normally would do a fall list cleanup at this point, but the fall list was broken. And so then we would do all, all the new games on Steam, which on that, let's just look here. This Ultimate Challenge was definitely a game we were looking at yesterday. Um, and this gray man is new. How are we, how were we looking at this game yesterday? when it says it's come out this yesterday I am confused mm -mm. like theoretically the games I should have stopped looking at would have been Somewhere on the 26th, I don't recognize any of these games. Hmm. Going back to even like the 25th, is this because I've just forgotten all these games? Or what? Like, I remember Orpheus. I remember this Jinping in this, this game. Blackjack Simulator. Hmm. I remember.
remember the Doom Dials and CEO Love Me. Gloom Grave, I remember. Russian Village Simulator. So I'm trying to just work back in my mind and see if we really did look at all these games yesterday. I think we probably did. Inherently, this is the problem. Less than 24 hours later, I've just forgotten all these games because um, the yes no nature of looking at games is so incredibly fast that I, I really am just giving a single visual look to the game and giving it a small chance and then I'm immediately forgetting it so one of my stated goals certainly when starting this whole process of looking at every single video game that came out on Steam was to become as best as I could more educated on what games are coming out and just more aware of what games are coming out and I'm not sure I am accomplishing any of that because it is literally just going in one ear and out the other and Yeah, I'm not sure that 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 makes sense to to bother to even make the efforts. At a certain level, I guess now things have slightly changed, and my goal now is to just make YouTube Shorts. whether or not it's in my mind or not. This is terrible. So, yeah. I've become just a mindless engine, I guess, of making shorts. And that my personal opinions are getting thrown in just a little bit when I curate. But then my mind and my memory is just being erased. It's, it's not staying in the long term memory which is probably a good thing because if, if I was memorizing in the long-term memory every single game that I looked at I would probably start forgetting everything else in my life there's almost certainly not enough bandwidth not enough storage there um, It is very weird, certainly, to boil, your, boil yourself down to just the subconscious servant of a bigger system in that I'm making YouTube shorts and then I'm relying on people to watch my YouTube shorts on YouTube to determine if they have any interest in the games or not what may very well have been the case here as to why this didn't work on my macro didn't work is that this may have been a case where one of these VR games got listed a second time 
and with that second listing that tricked my algorithm my macro into thinking it was done early when it wasn't done hmm. okay So, this game, El Paso Elsewhere, is something I saw they were comparing it to another game. I forget the name of the other game now. Uh, Max Payne, I think. And yeah, I think there's a, enough of a cult fandom of Max Payne to, to give this a chance. Otherwise, I would pretty much just dismiss this game. Neko's Night Market is something I guess I've already made a YouTube short on so I'm not gonna do that again. Ancient Warfare and Dynasty. I will let you know if any of these games look like something we talked about. Here we have a probably troll visual novel. There seems to be kind of a high amount of anti-Zelensky, uh, anti-Ukrainian uh, troll um, things here. This may be pro-Ukrainian, who knows. Um, but it, it's not something that I think would be interesting in actually playing. Yep. think the United States is really going to have to just have a one problem at a time situation and support Ukraine at the moment which is what they're doing to stop Russia from from taking over or attempting to take over all of Europe or start World War III and then at some point we will almost certainly see Ukraine turn from being an ally to being a enemy of some sort with the US and the West because isn't that the way it always goes um, particularly when the US is involved um, I'll make a YouTube short on this hidden object game but yeah Dwarves Mining Idol looks terrible Train SimWorld 4. I guess we could get lucky. Though it's not always the case. Uh, Ukraine might become best friends with the United States for a hundred years later. I guess if something's mixed like this, there's no reason to make a short on it. Cashier simulator. It's obviously an asset flip game, but also it would just be a game where you're doing a job. So why would that be fun? Magecraft looks like garbage. Fight M animatronics. It's just a Five Nights at Freddy's ripoff. Fidget Spinner RPG. Something like this may have been fairly popular back when fidget spinners were a big deal but honestly at this point you're very late to the party unless there's just been a resurgence of fidget spinners it is rated very positively but also it is just a a gimmick game so I'm gonna say no to making a short on that and we have a visual novel it looks like called memories millennial girl uh, well they're calling it a life sim hmm. It almost looks like it's more of a daughter raising simulator or an attempt at doing a daughter raising simulator um, differently. I'll definitely give that a follow. Whereas Plum Blossom Divination looks like a low par polygon garbage game. Dang Ghost looks like it's 
a match three game with an interesting art style although weirdly the thumbnail kind of hurts it in that it's this art style is frankly better looking in my opinion than the thumbnail anyways I'll give it a follow lost princess doesn't look like anything fast food crisis doesn't look like anything Croco game doesn't look like anything yeah it's, it's no surprise that I forget most games when you can go through 5 to 20 games and it's just like so bad the names are not memorable the games aren't and visuals aren't memorable so obviously it would just be forgotten instantly demon in the dark I'm gonna say no to uh, kanji industry a kanji automation game hmm I almost want to say yes to this you know what I'm gonna give it a follow but I'm not gonna make a YouTube short on it just to see if somehow it actually is good yeah we have an escape the room game escape from mistwood mansion yeah, we have a game called uprising there actually isn't that many games where you're part of a riot or you're uprising against anything even if you're uprising against a evil government like being a resistance there aren't that many games there's, there's oddly a pro-establishment theme around most games I'm gonna say no to lizards must die underground blossom looks like it's another one of these rusty lake games so I'm gonna say yes to this of course you have to kind of be familiar with the rusty lake series otherwise these games would look very similar to other less quality games hmm. cry babies magic tears the big game I have no idea if this really is a cartoon or if this isn't just some kind of um, inappropriate, not actually appropriate for kids game. It's my concern, but whatever. I'll leave it here and see. I'll make a short on it. Yeah. It's just frankly impossible for me to stay up with what is the newest thing. The newest kids fad for young kids in particular. I know Bluey seems to be somewhat popular with the, the dog cartoon, but give it another couple months, it'll be something else. If this wasn't a prologue, I would say yes to this. Um, But I'm having real trouble getting to the actual game instead of the prologue. So I'm just going to say no and move on. Here we have Roulette Simulator 2024, almost certainly from the maker of Blackjack Simulator 2024, wanting a dollar for each individual casino game, which does not make any sense at all. Quarantine Z survival. That is an interesting idea. If you had to hunt animals, but there also were zombies around and potentially infection in the animals, like you would have to potentially have some kind of zombie virus detecting kit or some way in which you had to prepare animals, drain the blood or something before you or cook them thoroughly. Um, but those kinds of survival aspects are almost exclusively forgotten about or never followed up on in zombie games in favor of just you constantly being attacked by zombies um, or other humans I'm gonna say no to the impossible tower I think I'm gonna say no to Hometopia it does look like it is 
an interesting home building app, but it doesn't look much like a game and it's mixed reviewed. Co-op building of a house is an interesting idea, certainly. Like the idea of co-op home design software or co-op professional software in general is weirdly missing. Like there are softwares you can install on Windows to have like two mouses at the same time. Um, but honestly, that should be integrated where you could have multiple mouses in collaboration. Uh, Google Sheets, Google Docs, and Word documents are designed for some collaboration there. And I believe Nextcloud has some collaboration in their uh, office suite of software. But as you get to things like Photoshop, I imagine AutoCAD doesn't have any kind of co-op things for architectural designs. Um, I imagine Audacity and audio editors don't have any collaboration abilities. And yeah, that is probably the future too. If, if humans are going to ever stay creative and competitive with artificial intelligence, it might very well be a case where five people have to work together uh, on one project. Or even if AI is not an issue, just to continue to develop things and make things better and bigger, collaborative design may have to be the default for all professions going forward. And certainly it's something to teach your kids is getting along and working well with other people can get you very far uh, compared to being a solo genius who's good at working alone. <clears throat> Next we have a game called Scrape Run which looks interesting visually but I'm still gonna say no to it because I just don't think there's a game here hmm early access 999 looks like maybe there's three locations and it's maybe an infinite runner Uh, I don't even think it's an infinite runner. Yeah, I'm going to say no to it. Beneath Orisa looks like something. Here we have an adult game, The Love of Magic Book 3, The Return. This is the adult Harry Potter sex game, 3D CGI characters. Book 3 is the final part of the trilogy, and the variety of the 3D characters is just all over the place. It's selling for $12.74, it's English only. Um, yeah, and I just don't feel like there's anything here. It says it has 20 plus hours of story driven visual novel RPG elements. I would question if maybe that's 19 hours of RPG grinding. I don't see any RPG gameplay elements at all in the screenshots. And what they may mean by our role playing game may actually be just selecting different dialogue choices, not actually fighting anything. Um, So yeah, nothing particularly special there. Here we have something called Carrot the First Seed, which is a unique art style. Kind of like a water color art style. A lot of pinks and purples in the color palette. Let's see, we'll put that on the fall list and make a short around it. Then we have Lunar Lux, which looks like something. 
Then we have a game called Chores of Corruption, which looks like it's a Binding of Isaac clone, which I'll give that a chance. And then we have Highway Rampage, which doesn't look like anything. Hmm. And then we have an adult game that's slightly different called Filled to the Limit. And it's a girl who is seemingly uh, being fed to be made fatter and fatter. And as you make her fatter, her clothes, I guess, rip off. So you have just like this blob at some point of this big topless fat lady being fed via feeding tube. It definitely is a either a troll game or it's appealing to a very specific fetish, a kind of dangerous fetish. Uh, it's in the adult section, although I question if it really should be in the adult section. Um, but I guess maybe it doesn't have any other content in it. There was another game that was not too different from this and it, it seems like you know we have one person making the same game multiple times or a couple people taking the same idea um, but yeah the visuals are not good let's let's just go ahead and show it some of the screenshots here like the visuals are not good here's the girl in her small form factor um, just being fed via tube um, and just being made fatter and fatter and fatter 591 pounds here 384 pounds here that seems like the numbers are pretty off based on the proportions being shown um, but yeah in the real world feeding people to such an extreme is incredibly dangerous and unhealthy um, and even in that I think it's a very narrow fetish like I'm not even a hundred percent sure if it would be a domination fetish of I'm controlling this person's body or I'm helping modify this person's body or if it is an actual physical appearance fetish of I for some reason have a desire to see this woman as fat as possible past what is a healthy amount past what is an acceptable body proportions it probably is also a fetish that you don't need to actually engage in with much because you could probably find somebody who's fairly fat and still somewhat healthy and you could probably find someone who is just naturally incredibly unhealthy and obese already so feeding them and making them even bigger is um, kind of crazy in the concept of uh, bondage domination sadism and masochism per particularly sadism and masochism there there is an idea of creating pain but not trauma and even in sadism and masochism you you'll see a lot of trauma being made trauma being this is a long lasting scar that will never heal uh, completely or won't heal well at all or this is a broken bone this is something that is actual physical damage versus swelling um, and light bruising which is about the level I think anybody in sadism and masochism should go yes you can get piercings and jewelry um, and that technically would be trauma and permanent but um, you would hopefully do that appropriately and safely. But do I want to say yes to rail gunners? Um, 
In the same way, feeding feels like you're just doing permanent damage, uh, potentially unreversible damage by feeding someone or feeding into their addiction of food, which very possibly is the case. Um, I'll give this a chance. And yeah. I just don't really agree with the idea of creating trauma. Because at a certain level, if you're into BDSM, it, that is like a bedroom playtime activity. It really shouldn't just be 24 7 your whole life. Uh, that's. that's a little too crazy it's not normal it's not really embracing with society around you or or the world around you um, and it certainly loses its specialness if it was 24 7 um, so trauma effectively takes it out of the bedroom takes it out of being that one session into being the real world and affecting your life outside of the bedroom and that's that's too dangerous and I, I say in the bedroom generally it doesn't actually have to be in the bedroom I'm gonna say no to last monarch here could be a swingers club it could even be that you you're at a camp of swingers or something and so it is potentially 24 7 activities uh, for the time you're at that camp Mm, yep, no to disassemble. But yeah, at some point you have to leave the fantasy and go back to reality for it to be special. Nothing here of interest. Mastery of Fate, Phantom King Rise, doesn't look like anything. King of Crabs. Looks like it might be something. Cookie game. Looks like nothing. Non Euclidean. Looks like garbage. Which spring are? They've already made a YouTube short on. But we can see it's very positive, so I guess I'll go ahead and put this RPG on the wish list. Rising Snake, the present world. It's nothing. And then Stella of the End. I guess a visual novel? Hmm. Triangles Project Battle Splash 2.0. I guess I'll give that a chance. Almost done. Here we have an adult game that is more of a manga style, I would say, because it's black and white. It's a taller office lady, anime lady. Who, it's called Wall, uh, Wall Ass Office Simulator, is the name. And it looks like it's an office lady stuck in a wall, and you can undress and molest her from front or back. But the stuck in a wall uh, anime trope, point and click, clicker seems to be the tag on it. Weirdly, English is not supported, although I'm not sure you really need to understand too much of what's going on, but you wouldn't miss out on all the story, and there are dialogue bubbles popping up and options. Yeah, I think you really would need to speak Japanese or read Japanese to be able to play this. Uh, it looks like it's a fairly simplistic game, which makes the price seem too expensive at $8.39. There is something very... Um, 
very interesting here in that this may be the very first Japanese only adult game released on Steam and yet it also noticeably is getting released on Steam even in the adult section by having an office lady who is drawn to be taller and not in the moe or kawaii style and not in a colorful palette even so it seems like there's a decent amount of compromise that had to be made to get it on steam that being said the next game is called two months of devil king and this is more of the kawaii anime high color um colorful color palette style hmm which is interesting because this is basically what I've been expecting to see and haven't been seeing for probably a month now is to have any game that's even close to this in the assumption that either the Japanese people were not making them anymore and, or not bothering to try to put them on Steam or Steam was rejecting them, one of those three possibilities. Now, I think this is more of a dungeon crawler game so there's actually a little bit more video game here also um, two months of devil king is a weird name <coughs> <coughs> excuse me it's selling for on discount for six dollars and 79 cents right now um, and it has japanese full audio in English and Chinese and Korean subtitles hmm. hmm it actually feels like a fairly quality product for a fairly low price there is maybe something in the interfaces that could use a little bit um, a little bit more polish but yeah it has live 2d on some of the cgs but not all of them and it says it has only 10 basic um, cgs and then four expressions in each cg which means 40 different cgs which is a fairly low custom graphics um, i assume it's what cg stands for yep so it doesn't feel like it's a very long game even though it, the visuals have some polish to it almost like the game was half finished and then just shoved out um, so six dollars and 79 cents may be a little too expensive for that reason here we have another hidden object game we can make a short on that and then i think we'll do nothing with reverse bot and we have what looks like a dungeon crawler that normally I would dismiss dungeon crawlers overall but I'm gonna give this a chance I think we're fairly close to the end here we have the RPG maker game called Goblin Conqueror which doesn't look like it's much of anything it's trying to sell on some giant globe breasts here Eleven dollars and sixty-nine cents, but no mature content warning for the game at all, and no adult patch for the game at all, and the animation style is not particularly great. Even though you still have the weirdness of these tag system just not really meaning anything, because this is tagged with mature and sexual content and nudity, and yet I severely doubt that any of that actually is in the game but i'm not sure which certainly if you're trying to avoid those things or guarantee those things being uncertain doesn't help in your shopping experience i think we can say no to relinked uh, here we have another 3d cgi adult game uh, my name new neighbor is a futa uh, yeah dick girl visual novel looks pretty awful nine dollars and 99 cents English allegedly full audio yeah nothing really interesting there 
Next we have a game called Venus Blood Gaia International, which looks like it's a dungeon crawler, but it's mostly negative already. Let's see if this is see if there's a real reason. See, and again, this has mature content, but it's not in the adult section, so it really is just this weird situation where, um, where there's a real inconsistency on what the adult store is supposed to include. Here, let's see. Translate. Translate to Japanese reviews or the non-English reviews. The crowdfunding users are here to complain. If we don't leave it to Kagura's Chinese translation, the result will be a lot of translation errors, not to mention the difficult little translations of people's names, a lot of skill translation errors, but with the translation quality, why do you want to raise the price? Why do you, don't you give me a hair? Go ahead and eat a big portion. The translation is full of errors and strange translations. Overall, it's not recommended to buy. It's difficult, just too high, totally unsuitable. Difficulty of this era. Quality of the Chinese translation is better than machine translations. This may very well be Chinese people complaining about the translations. Um, which maybe there is there's very possibly reason uh, to complain about the translations um, yeah or maybe this is review bombing from the Chinese I guess the the question here is we, we have to believe the reviews basically if they say they support simplified Chinese. Now, at some level, maybe it's a case that Chinese is just such a complicated language overall that even the Chinese don't agree on what should be translated. But I can't believe that. I think this game is probably getting a lot of negative reviews from Chinese people at the moment because of their translation it because the translation is bad. I don't think this is a review bomb of any sort. Um, we'll see if Venus Blood Gaia and Jest comes out and says anything about it or tries to fix it. Um, as far as English speakers, people seem to be alright with the game there. So you know what, I'm going to put this on the fall list. That being said, I don't think there's enough here to make a short around it. Next game, I'm still really saying no to any of these. Play as a fox wandering around an asset flip forest style games. Paleo Pines is already on the fall list. The dinosaur riding farming simulator game. Hmm. Little Johnny Goes Home looks like it is a platforming game, perhaps in part inspired by Always Up or whatever that that game was, but yeah, it looks like there's a little bit more polish to it, so I'm going to say yes to this and make a short on it. Star Farmer Warlock of the Universe. I'm going to say yes to just because it's so weird. And then Shroom Protect. You know what? I'm going to say yes to that because it's so weird. And then last game we have is called The Gray Man. Which I'm going to say yes to that because it's so weird. So anyways. With that, I'm going to end this stream. I thought maybe I could end so fast that I could come back to this, but then I realized I had missed a bunch of games, 
which makes a lot of sense that I had missed a bunch of games. So we'll leave it here. I'll probably play some Yu-Gi-Oh! off screen. I, I have one day left basically to pull off that and then I have three days left to get three more victories here. So I actually need to put in a lot of extra time here. That's going to be it for this stream. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my videos. If you want to support me further, there's a link down below in the description box. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.